Yeah. 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 3D printed, yeah. Dear Mr. or Mrs. YouTube, we are not talking about making your own homemade suppressors on a desktop 3D printer. These are factory made 3D printed options from licensed manufacturers using direct metal laser sintering, not at home filament 3D printers. Got it? All on the same page? Roll the intro. Roll it. What do I do? What do I do? Howdy everyone, Chase and Garrett here with Silencer Shop, and today we're talking about one of the biggest innovations in our industry, and that's gonna be the advent of 3D printing being used for suppressor designs. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits whenever it comes to you know 3D printing and suppressors, but first, let's talk about how suppressors were traditionally made. We saw the grandfather of suppressors, Hiram Maxim, patent the silencer design in the early 1900s. And over the last 120 years or so, we've seen some pretty significant changes in silencer design, going from monocores to tubeless welded silencers and different baffle designs, and they got really good over the last century. But now we're stepping into 3D printed suppressors, and this is just the next step over those CNC machines. Basically, this is like going from the house phone that you had in your parents' house to the iPhone that you have in your pocket now. Hello. Both make calls, but obviously one has a lot more capability and has some pretty serious advantages that the other just can't do. Yeah, that's one of the things with CNC manufacturing is because essentially what that is, it's subtractive manufacturing. So you take a piece of, you know, bar stock steel, you know, whatever or whatever metal that you'll be using, and then you take material away from that. Mm -hmm. Versus additive manufacturing, which is what 3D printing is, starts from nothing and kind of builds up from that point. Yeah, and when you're building it layer by layer, you can design structures that you wouldn't be able to cut. If you imagine like a bar stock seal, you have to be able to cut the feature in yeah. there. So you can't do things that are super intricate or super detailed just because of the way the tooling works. Mm -hmm. But these use a laser and powdered metal to be able to print these structures exactly how they want them based off a 3D model. So they know what the silencer is gonna look like and behave like before they even make a prototype. It's definitely a pretty complicated process, and luckily we were able to talk to the top engineers from all of the manufacturers so yeah. they could kind of educate us on how they're designing silencers and why this 3D printing suppressor technology is such a big advantage. So we got to talk to engineers from SIG and Huxworks and CGS and all of the top brands, and what they told us is that the, one of the big advantages is that they get to use CAD modeling so they can essentially make a 3D model of these silencers before they even print anything. And that allows them to look at how the gas pads are gonna work and how the pressure will flow through the silencer. And they can make these minute changes before they're cutting baffles and welding things and testing things. They can all do this digitally through simulations and that results in much better products on their first attempt. So they're not going through all these different iterations. They can refine designs quite a bit more and then print it and the printing allows them to create anything that their wild engineer brains can cook up, mm -hmm. which just wasn't possible. They went from something like this, where obviously they have a repeating design, these baffles can only be so different because the machine has to cut each one, to something like this, and you can see how much more intricate it is. It's not like we're even thinking in the same sphere anymore. We went from clipped cone baffles to whatever you would call this. It's definitely yeah. not a baffle. It's some sort of alien suppressor technology and there's a ton of benefits to getting away from some of these type models into something like this that has a much more sophisticated gas pack. Yeah, and we're talking about like cutting edge tech here. The micro weld lines are so fine. It's about the width of human hair or something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I think the quote was 0.000008 inches. And that gives them detail to print crazy designs that I wouldn't have thought were possible. Crazy designs that are crazy durable as well. If you're not familiar with how DMLS designs work, they take shredded metal powder. So it's super fine granules of steel or inconel or titanium and they layer those super flat, and then a laser comes through and welds all of those together so it creates one solid structure. And they do that layer by layer until they finally get the finished silencer, and then you're done. And there's no chance of error here. They're all done the exact same way. The laser is super precise, and it creates essentially no QC issues. They're all identical. They all perform the same. You're creating one structure from the base up. So there's no weak points, stress points, mm -hmm. fault lines, anything like that. Easier for the manufacturer because it's consistent, easier for you because you know you're getting a quality can that can hold up and it's gonna give you great performance. Exactly right. 
So obviously, like super hard materials are tough to machine. It's tough to have a tool cut into Inconel, or now we're seeing like Haynes 282, which is used in like rockets and missiles and stuff. You can't machine it easily. You'd be swapping out tools all the time. It's incredibly expensive. We've all seen broken drill heads before. Not after 10 feet. And there's a lot of waste because you're starting with a block of steel and machining that down to a single part. And what yeah. do you do with all the extra? It's just wasted. Mm -hmm. It's extremely expensive. With this, you're taking a metal powder and there's essentially no waste because they're just recycling all of the extra powder. It's laser welded together. There's no machining. So you can use materials that we didn't get to see on traditional manufactured suppressors. There's 100% titanium silencers now, 100% Inconel silencers before where we might have only seen like an Inconel blast baffle here and there. It's rare to get complete baffle stacks made out of those really exotic materials. And that is a huge benefit of 3D printing. It also allows us to get lighter weight designs because yeah. we can carve out more material from the inside or create more intricate gas paths. But what does that actually mean for the shooter? If I'm a shooter and I'm shooting suppress a lot, one of the big things that um, has come with 3D printing suppressor is the lower back pressure. So whenever you shoot higher strings of fire, these complex designs allow you to shoot these longer strings and not have to worry about all the gas in your face while still remaining durable and still sounding great. The low back pressure that we've seen innovated over the last five, six, seven years, something like that, has been a huge advance in silencer technology, especially on gas carbines like, you know, short barrel 556, 762 by 39, all of those kind yeah. of traditionally gassy carbine rounds benefit a ton and the shooter benefits a ton, especially as a lefty like I am, or just right-handed shooters that don't like the gas in their face. 3D printed technology allows these manufacturers to build designs that vent the gas and use the gas much more efficiently and keep it going out the silencer instead of back into your face and back into your gun. We're really getting to the point with 3D printed silencers that you kind of can have your cake and eat it too. We're getting the best in sound performance and low back pressure and weight and durability and they kind of do it all. And we're seeing this adopted from a bunch of the top manufacturers, everyone from uh, B&T and CAT that are silencer shop exclusive products to CGS and Dead Air and Surefire and Huxworks. All these big brands are jumping on board because the benefits are so apparent. They're actually becoming so popular that we're seeing military and law enforcement units use them just because of all the benefits that they do bring to the table. I'm doing my part. With 3D printed silencers becoming so much more popular and all the questions around these, the one that I see the most is, are 3D printed silencers even legal? Mm -hmm. And we want to be super clear that when we're talking about 3D printed silencers, we're talking about FFL made, licensed manufacturer made 3D printed silencers. These are not made on a desktop filament style 3D printer and they're legal in 42 out of 50 states. All of the states where suppressors are legal in, 3D printed suppressors are legal in. Another question you may have is, okay, what happens if I get a baffle strike or something happens with the suppressor, can these be repaired? And the good news is the way these are designed, it allows it to have a virtually 0% failure rate. Mm -hmm. But in case you do get something like a baffle strike, maybe you're shooting on an AK, they can still be repaired. This really is a super exciting time to be into silencers. We're seeing historically low wait times and historically fast innovation in silencers thanks to this 3D printing technology. We're seeing some of the best silencers that have ever been made. We're getting lower back pressure, better sound performance, better durability, uh, weight savings. All the features that we've always wanted are now possible thanks to these huge advances in technology. The 3D printed stuff is really awesome. If you're looking to add another silencer to your collection or you're getting your first one, you really should consider this DMLS stuff. It is super impressive. If you want more information, we have an entire blog on 3D printed suppressor where we got to interview some of the manufacturers that are using this process. And there's a little bit more in-depth look at some of those processes. If you're looking to get into cans, this is really the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're looking to get a 3D printed suppressor and you're not sure which one is right for you, drop a comment below. Shoot us a DM on Instagram. We're super active with the community and we're here to help you. We also have an entire video on how to choose the right suppressor for you. That'll be linked above and in the description. While you're down there leaving your comments, if you could leave us a subscribe to the channel and a subscribe to our newsletter, that's where we're gonna be sharing all of the latest in suppressor news, deals, info, and future innovations. Thank you all so much for watching. See you in the next one.